So tsunamis are uh, not easy to forecast, so it's better to call them as tsunami warning systems. Earthquakes, uh, there is some evidence that maybe using artificial intelligence and so on, uh, they can be predicted, but for all practical purposes right now, there is no effective earthquake warning system. But earthquakes can be measured by seismic activities. There are seismographs running all around the world uh, to detect not only earthquakes, but nuclear tests and other things. There are pressure sensors at the bottom of the ocean, which can measure uh, the pressure uh, caused by uh, pressure waves caused by uh, earthquakes underwater and so on. So this kind of an observing system or a monitoring system in the deep ocean uh, sends the signal to a buoy that is anchored to the bottom with this uh, heavy weight and it has sensors on the rope and a satellite beaming uh, uh, antenna at the top above the surface. So as soon as an earthquake happens, immediately the acoustic data is transferred, data is transferred acoustically to the nearest mooring, which beams the data to the satellite. The satellite beams it to uh, centers which are uh, ready to issue tsunami warnings. Uh, for example, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, which was set up in the 1940s after the devastating tsunami that occurred uh, at the time. So this deep ocean assessment and reporting of tsunami or DART is a system of buoys uh, that detects the pulse of tsunami uh, passing. Um, Several issues. One, uh, Pacific is the most well-instrumented system because, and it's maintained because tsunami gets hit regularly by, uh, I mean, Hawaii gets hit regularly by tsunamis. Uh, Japan is very interested in that and so on and so forth. The Indian Ocean had a system installed after the 2004 a uh, tsunami that killed 300,000 people. There was a lot of debate about who would pay for it, who would own it, and so on. Uh, it's not even clear that it's operating right now, but you can check. Um, but as I said, tsunami is a very rare event, so we have no idea when the next tsunami in the Indian Ocean would come. It's not a very seismically active ocean, so tsunamis are rare nonetheless. They are high impact. They are rare, but they are very high impact potentially. And the trouble uh, with early warnings is that not all uh, earthquakes can cause, can generate a tsunami. If the uh, plate movement is horizontal, then the water doesn't get moved vertically so much. So there is not a whole lot of uh, potential energy released into kinetic energy of the waves. So. Seismic activity will be uh, detected, tsunami warning will be issued, and you can end up with many false warnings because not every earthquake generates a tsunami. When there is a vertical movement and the water column is pushed down, uh, then that massive uh, potential energy is released into a tsunami. But if it's a horizontal slide, then there won't be. So this is not an easy task. Nonetheless, Tsunami watches are issued and there are signs like this in Hawaii where it says in case of earthquake go to high ground or inland. This was not a simple rule that was followed in uh, Phuket uh, on uh, December 26, 2004 where many many tourists were there. This, remember winter is a very popular time for Western Hemisphere tourists to come to the uh, beaches in the tropics because it's very cold in mid-latitudes where they come from, right? So beaches tend to be crowded uh, in winter and a lot of people got caught by surprise. Uh, so the old tribal sayings also in places like Andaman and Nicobar is that if the sea recedes, run uphill because that means the tsunami is coming. Okay, so tsunami warming is unusual wave activity, it's verified, people are asked to evacuate, uh, moving the ships away from the harbor because they can get broken and swept inland and so on. Of course, it turned out that even if a tsunami warning was passed along, places like India do not have a proper mechanism of, um, did not have a proper mechanism of taking that warning and making people take action. Like cyclones now, when there's a cyclone warning, people are told what to do, whether they have to evacuate and so on and so forth. Such a system did not exist for 
uh, tsunami before 2004, but you can be sure that now people are highly aware. The question is, if no tsunami comes for another decade or two, then will people forget? That's always the issue, right? So that's the tsunami warning system. And we will look briefly at the uh, wave energy uh, in the coast. We have looked at it briefly in terms of wind energy. Uh, ocean has waves, waves carry energy. Currents, we looked at how they can be used to drive turbines and produce energy. Uh, obviously, waves can also be used for uh, producing energy. So uh, how can we do it? We'll see that. Mm -hmm.